Welcome to Zach's Trader Cafe. I'm joined by David Bick and the legend himself, Zach Meir. Gentlemen, very good morning. Good morning. Where on earth do we begin? Do we talk about the British weather, politics, I'm, Thomas Cook? Well, I like to talk about Bitcoin. I think Tom, if we go on to the, uh, the, the, the first, I suppose it's a bit old news now, Thomas Cook going down. I think a lot of people were. Uh, expecting it, a lot of hedge funds were expecting it, and they but they bet the farm on uh, the, the, that company. Metro going Bank, for, Thomas. Yeah, Cook. I, I think that was that's what I'm saying. That I think we're going to get into this uh, high street names. Uh, you know, I think 178 years Thomas Cook lasted. It managed to go down. Well, now. Marks and Spencer's now out of the uh, FTSE 100. Yeah, so we, we, I think we've got this situation here that unless uh, they're going to be taken over by somebody because they're so cheap. Um, then they are, there is, there's going to be a lot of there's a lot of stuff hidden out there. I think which is in, in distress, and that's something to think about because um, anybody looking at the UK, they'll see stuff as cheap, but they'll say, well, I'm not going to put 100, 200 million, 500 million into into the UK with all this uncertainty around. So you wouldn't back the UK PLC right here, right well, now? Well, the other problem is that... Foots is cheap, no, right? No but, then, no, but then you had Cobham. You know, some, somebody turns up and says, you know, we want to buy Cobham, and it's referred to the Competition Commission. So, you know, there's no, there's no way out. There's no way of saving it. There's got to be, like, a, a mechanism there where people who want to put money into, you know, maybe throw good money after bad can't do that. Um, but that's the whole point of the stock market. The stock market is there so that you can buy and sell. If you can't, if you can't buy, uh, you can only sell at the moment. David, there was a radio phone in this morning about um, British politics yesterday, and people were asked to sum it up in three words. Um, what were your thoughts on what's gone on in the last 24, 48 hours? I, I watched the Boris Johnson statement to the Commons, and my overwhelming impression was one of, feeling was one of just sheer embarrassment at the, the rabble like behaviour uh, of a large section of MPs. And even the Speaker himself pointed out that, you know, please bear in mind, people around the country and the world watching this, um, you know, and the impression that that's creating. Well, the speaker's the one who's cre created this. It's well, like he's, a, it's like he's, a, he's part of... It's he's, like a football club. He, no? He's part of the architecture, absolutely. But he's on the Cromwell now. He's, he's in charge. It will reinforce the view in many, many people's minds that it has become, as presented, Parliament versus the people. And I, I accept Boris Johnson's view, the Prime Minister's view, that... A lot of these MPs uh, who, who are behaving in this way are doing so because they know they're not, either they're not standing for election when the next election comes, or they know that they're going to lose because they're on way for thin majorities. And I, I think, I don't know what sort of number you'd put on it out of the 650 MPs, but there is a, I think, a significant minority who are behaving utterly irresponsibly. Mm. But wasn't there a situation where Boris himself is behaving in a, a difficult, controversial, uh, almost unelectable way? He wants to force uh, Parliament to allow him to have an election. I mean, he's making himself uh, very, very spiky and, and difficult so that you know, Labour will just say, oh, we, we, know, we can't, or you know, the, the opposition will say, we, we can't have this anymore. He's forcing them into... Uh, there being an election? I think there's a different reality. Uh, I mean, first of all, they cannot be forced to vote for it. And I think something like 75% of the House has to vote to overrule this, what I think has become a very silly law. What went before I thought was perfectly acceptable. The government chose the timing of the election. Uh, but he can't force them to do that. And, and, and actually, to be brutal about it, you know, the Labour Party are not going to vote for election when they, they're sitting where they are in the polls. Yeah, but they're not going to vote for election because uh, an election <coughs> could lead to uh, a mandate for Brexit, which they don't want. So they'd, rather, they'd sure. have anybody. They'd have sure. Marcy Tung, they'd have Stalin, they'd have sure. anybody there as Prime Minister, well, as long as there's no Brexit. I, I agree <laughs> that that's entirely the case, and that amplifies the fact that they are standing in the way of the people's will. Yeah, but the people's will, that's, I mean, we were discussing this off camera, um, that is the last factor in this. I mean, that's the most insignificant part of the whole equation here. The people are the smallest part of this whole machine here. Well, I, I, I'm afraid I can't agree with that, Zach, because you had 17.2, 70.4, whatever the number, million people voted to leave the European, on the simple proposition of leaving the European Union. And I think we've got to be very careful, given the way that, that a lot of these MPs are behaving, we've got to be very careful not to ratchet up the hyperbole. But I do think that if, for, work, for any, any, whatever reason, Brexit does not go through because of the behaviour of these MPs, 
I think that has very serious consequences for this country, much more serious than the drama queen rhetoric about what happens if we do leave. I think very, very serious consequences. And I kind of want to leave it at that because I, you know, I wouldn't want to be seen to be inciting certain types of behaviour. But you cannot, uh, in, in a democracy, ignore this many people and expect there not to be consequences. Yeah, but the, the, it isn't. It, it, it's been shown that it's not a democracy. Aren't we getting to the situation now where it's, it's actually like, let's forget the whole Brexit. Let's just stay as we are. It's too much trouble. It's causing too much instability. Let's just forget it. Isn't, isn't that... Isn't well, that the, the, you, the voters well, might actually go for that angle in I, the end. I, I think, in truth, you, you uh, there's a different way of putting this, and I thought off-camera you put this beautifully, and perhaps you want to do it now, about what's happening here in terms of the different parts of the establishment. Well, no, you've got, every, you've got everyone and their mother, including the, uh, the, the leader of the law lords, uh, saying uh, there, can, there cannot be a Brexit. So it's the law lords, it's parliament, it's the media, it's big business. It's everyone who matters, everyone who's more important than the man in the, or the woman in the street. So against that overwhelming odds, is there any point the people pushing this anymore? Yes, I think there is. Because ultimately, what you're describing is, is what's given rise to the popular, particularly right-wing movements in Europe, whether that's Germany or France or Italy, Austria, uh, and to some extent here. Uh, you're, the establishment is creating conditions for unrest. And that's why I think they, they are putting self-interest above national interest and that will have consequences. The establishment's going to learn that they can't continue to behave like this. You cannot ignore this many people. But even though they're cleverer, richer, uh, more educated, I mean, they're more educated, can't we just accept that? Uh, no. Um, better education doesn't necessarily give you good judgment. Um, better education doesn't give you a sense of fair play. Um, better education doesn't necessarily make you a better Democrat. And the establishment have demonstrated through certain t parts of big business, uh, the law lords, um, you know, and various other parts of the establishment, the civil service, the BBC. Uh, there is this overwhelmingly arrogant attitude that they know best. Uh, it has divided the country, but what I do think will happen once we do get out of the European Union is a lot of this division will disappear quite quickly. Yeah, but there's absolutely no way it's going to happen. Uh, I, it's blocked. I, it's I totally can't, blocked. I, I mean, it's literally... I, I, I can't it's say it will wall. happen. It's a concrete wall. Well, I can't say for definite that it will happen. So I think the only thing we can say with any certainty is we don't know what's going to happen. And there are any number of permutations of what happens over the next few weeks. So I, I, I honestly don't think you can say it, it's not or can't happen, because it, for the same reason that I can't say that it will. We're in an extraordinary times, uncharted territory, um, but I think you have got a very determined Prime Minister and government here who are, are being very clear about adhering to the will of the people. But Boris Johnson's determination, all it really centres around is him being Prime Minister. He's got that job now. <laughs> He doesn't have to do anything. I mean, he's, he's achieved his ambition. Um, I think we're uh, down uh, for that. I'm sorry, Zach, but you obviously didn't listen to his statement yesterday. He, he, was, he invited uh, the opposition parties to move a motion of no confidence in him as Prime Minister and to trigger an election. And it's, it, he's made it an open invitation for them to submit themselves to the judgment of the people. And but so far, well and so far, won't. and they so won't. far, they have... They are, they are declining to do so. And you know they're declining to do so for entirely selfish reasons. Gentlemen, let's do a couple of minutes on the stock markets before we fall out. <laughs> Tip of the week. Um, Zach, we, you suggested buying Bitcoin last time. I see that we had a stock market crash in that this week. Yeah, um, I, think, I is, think, no, I think there is, a, there is an element of, I saw, you know, gold went down, Bitcoin went down. I think there's another aspect here that we are really, really at the end of a, a, a massive bull run, and uh, you know I don't. It's whether it's Trump uh, and Ukraine or whether it's Brexit, we are just literally on the. It reminds me of the summer of 2007. I think we're in that kind of situation. You think we're at the top. We know the the the, the failed bond issue by Metro Bank. Yeah. 
um, the 250 million that they couldn't get away, which apparently everybody in the city knew, but no, nobody in the real world knew. Um, that, I think, was exactly the same as uh, the Northern Rock situation, a bit like the ABN AMRO uh, RBS thing. And the Fed lowering interest rates and uh, uh, having to inject liquidity into the U.S. economy there, or to, into into the banking system there, that is something which is you know very 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 serious. I mean, Trump had to say you know China's there's going to be China uh, tri China trade uh, victory uh, any any day now in order to keep the stock market yep. going. I mean, there's literally there's nothing else to put on the fire now, and I, I and, you know, and I think it's it's. It's poetic that we have this Brexit issue. It's poetic that we have uh, Trump and uh, his potential impeachment coming through as well. Uh, something is going to give very soon, and it's going to be on the Brexit side when people either say, you know, we've got to uh, get this through or give up, or Trump, you know, Trump will be, you know, the, 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 the establishment in America do not want Trump for another four years. So in the next year in America, how is that going to how is that going to pan out? I mean, he is literally, you know, public enemy number one for. Um, the Congress, the Senate, all the establishment there. So we have parallel uh, establishment moves here, and we'll find out, you know, who, you know, who, where the, the power the, really the lies. Di the difficulty that the American establishment has with that is people keep voting for it. Yes, and the difficulty here is that people will keep voting for Brexit. If there was a poll now, presumably a lot of people would just say, um, I don't even like Brexit, but. Um, it's, this is my protest vote. Well, it certainly seems to me you pick up a lot of opinion that Remain voters are saying, you know, you, you, you should just now get on with it, even, even though we don't agree. With so, it. what is the tip for, for the audience? Uh, the tip for the audience, I suppose, I'm really looking to see a, a top in the stock market. I can't. I mean, you've got the, the 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 there is a bear market already in the small caps. You know, the 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 lower end of the market. But you know, Thomas Cook, Metro Bank, things like that. I think they become more frequent, and that's eventually going to go into the FTSE, and it's going to go into the Dow, and it's going to go we into the other markets. Can, yeah, yeah. can I actually just ask you? Zach, the question. Uh, I'm not a stock market historian, but we're nearly into the the month of October, and October always seems to be the month for bad news, bad corporate news, bad economic news. Um, you know, it's it's when crashes occur and so on. Is there a consistent pattern with October being a bad month? It's it, it's September and October really. So it's the September is, is is we normally have companies reporting, especially in the US, and it's, it tends to be a disappointment. Uh, but it is we know this is the only decade where we haven't had a stock market crash since uh, nineteen twenty no since the nineteen twenties. So every what, every, what, every what time. Do you, what, what do you define then when you say the the, the only decade where we haven't had that since the twenties? What therefore is defined as Minimum for a crash. Well, I think uh, twenty percent uh, down in, in a short order would be would right. be the equivalent of that. But we've right, had right. that. We had that every time. We've had that even in the uh, in the nineties. Um, yeah, yeah. And we had it in, in the noughties as well. So yeah. uh, this one, uh, unless there's something really different, you know, we've got we've got three or four months to uh, to come up with that and uh, prove history right. Well, people like Bill Bonner are calling the Dow down to fifty percent. Right. On that note, um, obviously, if you're thinking about shorting the market. Out of the money, put options, quite sensible, maybe short in futures, or maybe just doing a bit of delta hedging on your portfolio. On that note, gentlemen, um, you've clearly got your thoughts on the situation. Are we going to have a Brexit, yes or no? Yes. Zach? Absolutely no way. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you, Miss. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.